Welcome, Illumineers and fans of the happiest card game on Earth. My name is John T, and you're in the Inkwell. This is our third and final part of our mini-series looking at the starter decks for Lorcana, the first chapter. Today, we're taking a look at Sapphire Steel, headed up by Aurora, Dreaming Guardian, and Simba, Returned King. We'll be taking a look at what makes the deck tick, the packages within it, and how it wants you to win. We'll start by taking a look at the box characters. Aurora Dreaming Guardian is a 5 costed inkable 3 5 for 2 lore with the classifications Floodborne, Hero, Princess. She has Shift 3 and Protective Embrace. Your other characters gain Ward. Aurora Dreaming Guardian has one job in this deck and that is to keep your other big hitters out of the firing line of targeted removal. The Sapphire Steel deck is all about ramping up into big dudes, but the larger they are, the harder they fall. Fall, and it doesn't matter how beefy something is, it's dying to a dragon fire. Aurora is there to look after everything else on the board. Being a super rare, she is only a one-off in the deck, but you have got a good chance of shifting her out when you do see her due to the smaller Auroras that the deck comes with. Three copies of Aurora Regal Princess, a two-costed inkable 2-2 two -two for two lore, and three copies of Aurora Briar Rose, a four-costed inkable 2-5 for one lore with the ability disarm beauty. When you play this character, chosen character gets minus two strength this turn. Both of these cards are perfectly acceptable early plays in their own right, but they are there purely so that if you can get your Aurora Dreaming Guardian online, you're going to have a great shift target for her, so she can sit back and look after the big hitters. One of those big hitters is Simba Returned King. He's a seven costed inkable 4-6 for two lore with the classification Storyborn Hero King. He has Challenger plus four and Pounce. During your turn, this character gains evasive. Simba Return King is the poster boy of the big boys in this deck. He's an 8-6 on the offensive and one of the few ways to deal with the evasive characters that are found both in the Ruby Emerald starter and the Amethyst Amber starter. But a lion rarely lives alone and Simba Return King brings a pride with him. Two copies of the six-costed Inkable 4-6 for three lore, Mufasa King of the Pride Lands. Two copies of the five-costed Uninkable 3-5 for two lore, Law Simba Rightful Heir with the ability I know what I have to do. During your turn, whenever this character banishes another character in a challenge, you gain a law. And one copy of the Black Sheep of the Family, the six costed Inkable 5 4 for two law, Scar Mastermind. When you play this character, chosen opponent character gains a minus a five willpower this turn. Your other ramp target is about as chunky as a vanilla can get, a five costed Inkable 8 8 for three law in Maui Demigod. So this deck is all about playing these big guys early, how are you getting there? Luckily, it comes with a pretty impressive ramp package. One jump ahead is Ramp in its purest form. For a two-costed, non-inkable action sung, you can take the top card of your deck and place it straight into your inkwell face down and exert it. A non-inkable card that should be a four of in this deck, but with two copies in the starter, it's going to be a little less consistent. Luckily, there are other things you can look for as well. Two copies of Grandma Tala, Storyteller. She's a two-costed, inkable, one-one for one lore. I will be with you. When this character is banished, you may put this card into your inkwell face down and exert it. A turn two play that most likely gains you a law or two even before becoming part of the inkwell. This is a fantastic uncommon for this deck. I think this card will see constructed play to be honest. And Mickey Mouse Detective, a three costed uninkable one three for one law, dreamborn hero detective. When you play this character, you may put the top card of your deck into your inkwell face down and exert it. So this deck's going to ramp up and hopefully play your bigger guys a turn or two before you normally would be able to. Problem is, your opponent isn't just going to sit there and let you do it. So how do we deal with the early board whilst we're getting to our game plan? Luckily, Steel has a fantastic package for that. Fire the cannons, a one-costed uninkable action, deal two damage to chosen character. Smash, a three-costed inkable action, deal three damage to chosen character. And grab your sword, a fire five costed uninkable action sung deal two damage to each opposing character. Steel really is coming into its own here with all of this targeted removal. Alongside the early game challenger package of Captain Hook, Forceful Duelist, Prince Eric, Dashing and Brave, and a couple of Hercules true heroes with bodyguards to look after them, and you should be able to keep on top of the early game as you ramp up into your big finish. The big weakness of this deck is it has one thing you need to do first and another thing you need to do later. 
You have to ramp up to begin with and then have the bigger cards to play. If you don't draw well and are unable to find the ramp cards early or unable to find the big hitters later, then there's a chance that this deck stalls out. But if you curve out nicely, there's a big chance that you are dropping a huge body on the board on turn four or even as early as turn three. The opponent ain't gonna know what hit him. If you enjoyed this, make sure you like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any more. Thank you so much for watching. I've been John T. You've been in the Inkwell. Until the next one, be good.